Welcome to the podcast. Today, we've got a bit of a threesome coming on today. This is Jake and Simon joining us today. And uh, we've got three subjects to talk about today. Um, can't resist talking about the new lighter, stiffer, faster TCR. Hit the news this morning. Um, we were kind of waiting for it. That's all good. We're going to talk about that Visma helmet. I thought we've got our resident time trial expert in today. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, the um, the look pedals, the look power mate pedals, which DC Rainmaker has already broken. So I think we've got a very good podcast going on today. So Giant TCR, we've been talking about TCR a lot. And yeah. to, as for the comments delight, a lot of angry comments about. So first things first, it looks okay. It looks quite nice. I like looks, the colours. Well, it looks like a TCR. Yeah. I think, well, we also picked up the back end that also look, looks a lot like a Canyon Ultimate. Yeah, it does actually. Yeah. It, it's got the right silhouette for the bike, hasn't it? And I'm mm. happy with that. And I like the fact that it's got very clean lines. There's no like big stripes or anything. It's just very clean. Giant logo, nice plain colours. I think that's going to really peeling bike after that i was quite shocked how expensive it was yeah yeah and it's gone up in price again for what yeah. gain from that extra expense yeah lighter stiffer faster <laughs> like, so, but how much lighter how much stiffer how much faster yeah like i always think that the bottom of the range one needed stiffening up the advance is always a disappointing ride to me on, on the handle at the front end um and i never really quite understood the whole point of the sl because i thought was well, the propel etc why would mm. the sl exist so for me, the TCR is always about the Advanced Pro. So yeah. you're going to focus on that one, I think, for most of it. And you've done loads of work here. Yeah, as our, as our resident shopper, yeah, uh, I've been looking around. I've written out some notes this morning. Um, so yeah, we're looking at, so this is, I would, we would say probably what, well, yeah, I've done some crunch some numbers. And basically the most standard spec is with the Ultegra Di2 with the carbon wheels. That's what's most comparable across all brands. Because if you've got 105 on there, people have alloy wheels or carbon wheels. I like, stuff like that. I think that's a good place to start because I think that's what most people kind of want. They want a carbon frame, an Ultegra group set, and okay, they might make some compromises from there. You know, can I compromise the wheels to get the price? Yeah, so carbon frame, Ultegra group set, that's the, the dream base spec. Yeah, yeah that is the, that is the, yeah. that is the. yeah, I don't know if middle of the road's the right word, but it's not the middle of the road anymore. It's it not. <laughs> it used to be. So <laughs> the road. We have yeah. got. I, again, the naming convention still baffles me to this day, but the Giant TCR Advanced Pro Zero with the in-house Giant SLR carbon wheels is now 6,499 Great British Pounds. That's so much money. A hell of a lot of money. <laughs> There's a lot of other bikes you can buy at that price point. There is. And have money left for There is. So I've been shopping around. So obviously what we talked about last week, the Look 785 Huez, which we have got coming imminently. Yeah. And I think, just to be clear, that's not a direct competitor. I think that's going to sit somewhere between the Advanced Pro and the Advanced SL in terms of what we've seen from stiffness and weight, etc. So, yeah. The frame set itself is 2004, 90 quid stem. So, yeah. yeah. But, yeah, so that is, that's exactly the same price for Look Carbon Wheels um, and all the Look Finishing Kit versus Giant Carbon Wheels, Giant Finishing Kit. It's £9 cheaper, so you can buy yourself a Garmin mount. Um <laughs> Band. Well, I know which bike I prefer to look. <laughs> that's, that's, that's unheard of, isn't it? Look is so renowned for being expensive, but what you're saying is now that you could buy a look with the same spec and have enough change for a Garmin mount. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, but, yeah. I mean, for as, as yeah, Giant, I mean, it's 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 an interesting one because I, and then I did a bit more shopping around, so I thought, wow, that's interesting. Um, and so I had a look at someone who I would consider a, a pretty direct competitor to Giant, which is Canyon. I think they run their business in quite a similar way. It's obviously not quite as direct for a yeah. giant, but it's pretty similar. Um, so the equivalent Canyon, the Canyon Ultimate CF SL8, which of, again, their naming convention. Yeah. Um, now this comes with DT Swiss Arc 1600 wheels. Nice set of wheels. Which is, I would say, much nicer than a set of giant SLR wheels. And hooked. Yeah. Just if that's hot <laughs> to anybody, maybe. <laughs> uh, and this also comes with a power meter as well. Uh, yeah. That is 4,799 pounds. Wow. It's... 1800 pounds cheaper than a giant tcr and that's two bikes i'd consider to be in the same ballpark i think it's important actually we say it's about the same ballpark and brand perceptions i think is important here because um where do we put giant in our brand perceptions i think it's still a mass market consumer brand yeah um so is canyon a mass market consumer brand and so is van risel mass market consumer brand they're not they're not putting themselves out there as prestige um or niche or anything like that it's a very standard geometry bike with standard component trees so i think it's um and i think if you were shopping for a giant you don't necessarily go i really want a giant you're looking for a really good value road bike yeah i think 
uh, and that good value road bike might send you Canyon, Van Riesel, Boardman, whatever. I don't think at that level you're brand loyal. Would that be right there? I think there's a lot of brand loyal giant riders, I think, as we see in the... You think? Yeah, yeah. I mean, do you not remember? No, we could one? care with that. I mean, I look at people you ride with and the community you're with. You know, you're going to follow where the rest of the club riders are riding and... Yeah. Giant, you wouldn't go wrong for buying a giant. Yeah. No, no, Tisha. No, you wouldn't go wrong. You wouldn't get laughed at. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You don't. You don't. Yeah. I mean, they're perfectly nice bikes. Again, I've owned one. I liked it. Yeah. But I think the new. I mean, the new price point is. I don't understand why you would buy one of those instead of a look for no. six thousand five hundred pounds. Or Gi- giant always used to be the value proposition. It used to be, okay, I don't want to buy a Boardman from Halfords, or I don't want to buy a Canyon from the internet. I'm happy to pay a little bit more for knowing that there is at least a shop representing the brand. Um, but you're paying a lot more a lot more privilege now. A lot more. It almost up into the prices of what used to be prestige brands. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, the other brand we haven't talked about is Time. I mean, so what could you get if we went for Time? Oh, this blew my mind. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I suggested <laughs> because the so the frame set is on sale, is, is advertised at £2,000 on the website. And again, we should... This is Giant TCR. The Giant TCR, sorry. Giant TCR Advanced Pro is £2,000. Yeah. That's the middle of the range one. Yeah. yeah. So a Time Out to Airs is £3,300 for the... Um, the raw carbon black. Yeah. yeah not, black. not the unpainted, but just the carbon black. Yeah. There, yeah. Which is obviously, that's a big step up in price. But then I thought, well, a 105 DR2 group set is now on sale for about a thousand pounds. Yeah, just under yeah nine eight nine. I just I just googled it. You easily get one for under a grand. But just yeah. talking about the frame. I mean, if we're talking stiffness, and that's one of the big boasts of the new yeah. ECR, they can't beat the time when it comes to. No, it doesn't even it doesn't even tickle it, does it? It's... Well, we haven't ridden one. We're saying that. No, I, I, yeah, that's fair. Oh my god, that must be the stiffest bike you've ever ridden. Is that time? <laughs> yeah, I would be very surprised if they managed to make the TCR stiff as it. I would because it blew my mind when I first rode rode a time uh, help to us. Uh, you know, just doing thirty second sprints. And it's so stiff. The power transfer is phenomenal. I was mm-hmm. completely converted the first time I rode it and did a serious session. Yeah, and you were riding the ADHX, which is about two kilograms <laughs> yes. heavier than yes. a normal bike. Exactly. <laughs> and you beat yourself in a sprint, which is insane. It's like that power transfer is, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'd be very surprised if they beat it on stiffness. But yeah, so, you can get a, um, a 105. So obviously we are going down a stepping group set here to a 105 DI2, but still a perfectly nice functional group set. Yeah, but the price difference now isn't that much. It's about three to 400 quid yeah. maximum on an Altegra. So you could push to Altegra if you wanted to. If, if, it was, if it was important to you, you could. Yeah. yeah. But then that leaves you over with £2,200 to get a set of wheels, some tyres and finishing kit. That's so, you could, you could make a really phenomenal bike. Yeah. For that much money. That blows my mind. That so, could be, yeah. So for the price of a giant TCR Advanced Pro DI2 Altegra, you could have a Time Hub Duez with an electronic group set and pick up a thousand pound set. A thousand pound set of wheels now is a set of fast forward Riot 33s on DT Swiss 350 hubs. Yep. Solid set of wheels, brass nipples, solid hubs, everything, no problem. And still have enough money for Car- decent carbon amount. handlebars, carbon seat post. Could we get in the budget some power meter pedals? We don't know. I think that's yeah. probably pushing it. I think we're probably pushing it. We'll come, we will come on to that later, though. Just one sign? Just, yeah, maybe one that sided. Like, my power meter, my power meter left hand crank is 350 quid. So again, you could put a power meter in there like you have on that canyon for the same price. Yeah. Sure, good point. It makes no sense. Buying fully built bikes at the moment just makes no sense yeah. at all. And, I, and I, I don't, God knows what happened in the giant marketing department. They were trying to decide how to price this because that is that is bonkers um i had a quick look at van Riesel because if i was choosing between a giant and a van Riesel, i'd put them in the same place van Riesel was five thousand five hundred quid it's a thousand pound cheaper yeah I'd, if i really wanted a full fully built bike off the internet i'd probably pick the van Riesel. i think i'd pretty good with that canyon but i think i'd lean to the custom built bike around the time first yeah time. yeah i mean if you want if you wanted to spend that sort of money six and a half grand you can you can make a really really phenomenal bike mm. for that and i did think as well Again, so like, yeah, we were thinking about this Advanced Pro, but then you obviously have the step above that on the Advanced SL. Yes. Which is true. the Pro spec frame. It's got the it's got that integrated seat post as always, which is the giant that's the giant thing really. Apparently apparently it rides really well, really stiff. No, oh, yeah. All that sort of stuff. I've never ridden one myself. But the new the new one, which has got again that Ultegra DI two group set, so this is like the base spec of the pro frame with Ultegra DI two. Again, still giant in house wheels, still giant finishing kit. That comes out at eight thousand eight hundred pounds. Yeah, okay. And, and that's, that's definitely putting you to that Van Riesel territory, isn't it, really? That's 8,005. 
Well, eight thousand eight. Uh, well, do you know what you can get for eight thousand five hundred pounds? You, know, you could probably get a Pinarello. <laughs> you can get a blade. You, you can, get, you can get you can get a look blade an RS Ultegra Di two <laughs> of course with Karima wheels <laughs> for eight thousand four hundred and ninety great British pounds. Amazing. So you have three hundred and nine pounds left over to spend yeah. whatever you want. You could get, oh, get my palm meter pedals in. Yeah, a single sided. Yeah. 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 Maybe pedal. just <laughs> that is mental because I mean the blade competes more with the Pro pedal, but. Given the choice, let's say, for instance, you just had £9,000 floating around, a blade with a set of power meter pedals or a giant TCR, no, let me think about that, just to set up it. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. And talking of ridiculous things, yeah. we have got <laughs> good, the, good good segue on the new Visma Lisa bike gyro time trial helmet. Now, Simon, so as our resident time trialist, what did you think when you first saw this on Tuesday afternoon when it, uh, when it broke cover? Well, I was pretty inspired about the creativity and in, in terms of the thought they got into design so for me i'm all for where you can get marginal gains how you can get a little bit faster and i can't imagine these guys are wearing the ha- helmets because they make them slower so they must have done some serious testing it must be faster otherwise why would you turn up on the start line with a helmet like that on? yeah um so yeah if you put it i mean think about form and function i think the functions obviously there i'm sure in terms of his aerodynamics the form in terms of how it comes across and aesthetics question mark i'm sure but the one thing that got me thinking is, you know, as you're down in that position and looking at the visor, I'm kind of wondering, do you get better visibility up the road? And is it theoretically safer? I've never worn one. I'd love to try one out. But can you get a better line of sight as you look at the road? And we've, seen, point, actually. we've seen many accidents, you know, where people hit the barrier. Uh, I remember one recently. <laughs> That's the hell, wasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. That's head down riding. So despite everything people's first impressions are what it looks like, is it actually going to be safer to ride it? I think once you're actually on the bike in the aero position, it looks quite normal. It's just when they're walking... I, 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 I think if you... From a head-on shot, I think yeah. it looks all right. Side-on, it looks a bit suspicious. Yeah. And top-down, it still looks pretty bad. Yeah. Um, and the second they stand up from the bike, oh. you're like, what? It, yeah, it doesn't... I mean, but we've seen a lot of people wearing aero helmets and if they're not dialed into an appropriate position, you sometimes see the the fins, the tail sticking right up in the air. Yeah. It's definitely not aero. So one thing you've got to remember is an aero helmet really depends on the rider and the position. And one helmet is going to suit a different rider and not all, the yeah. same helmet fits everybody on the team perfectly based on their position. Yeah, and if you look at Fingergaard in that helmet, obviously the star rider of that team, yeah. he looks phenomenal in that, doesn't he? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, there's already some chit-chat about the UCI looking into it and stuff. And I was thinking why, because it's clearly they'd probably thought about the safety and tested yeah. it. But my thing is, if you're trying to inspire young riders to take up the sport of time trial, and like, oh, you want to see them on the TV, go, yeah, that looks really cool. I want to do that. <laughs> it's what the UCI are trying to do. That looks like a fair race. That looks exciting. I want to be a part of that sport. Um, does this helmet for you, if you're a young rider, go, oh, yeah, sign me up. I don't want to be a time trial. <laughs> I, I, I think every, I, I can't say many of the UCI's decisions that I've seen have made me, made me think about making the sport exciting. I think they do a lot of questionable things, but I th- yeah, yeah. I, I don't know if I'd go down that road exactly, um, but I, th- I mean, yeah, if it's faster, you're going right, to wear it. Credit to the designer, credit to the work that's gone in. There's a lot of, obviously, research has gone into it and innovation. It's all designed within UCI current parameters, so mm. fair play, you know. And if UCI changed the regulations and they can't design helmets like this, but so be it. But I think, you know, credit to the team for investing in the research and coming out with a helmet, which would imagine is proven to be faster in a wind tunnel environment how much on the road i don't know how much testing has been done yeah i absolutely agree with you on that i think it's i think it's very commendable that they've they're really pushing the boat out you can tell that these guys are pushing for every last little bit of performance can't you because you're not turning up in that for fun are you no No. definitely you're serious you want to make it you know you want to get that marginal gain you want to if if one of these guys wins by one or two seconds and that makes a difference to a gc position potentially let go of the zero last year i think you know think of how it finished and the differences Mm. You know, these marginal gains could make the difference between coming first or second, you know. I mean, yeah. there's millions of pounds in yeah. revenue yes. associated to that. So, yeah. But the one increased success, I would say, with this helmet from the word go is the marketing success. Oh, absolutely. Just look at the attention it's getting. We're talking about it. It's on social media. If I was a sponsor of this Lisa bike, I'd be over the moon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And I, of course, Gyro is a new sponsor to them as well, isn't it? So, I don't even know if they won or not. Did they win? No, no. <laughs> I think that. Right. If I'm wrong, well, I'm still talking about Vinegar was ninth. But he was twenty. <laughs> he lost twenty-two seconds to to Young Kwan Ayuso. But I don't think that was the down the helmet, and I think we're going to see some yeah. great rides. They also had a, they also had a pretty shocking TTT in Paris Nice as well, didn't they? So I think 
I think the performance is still out on it. I, I'm sure it, there's there's no way they're running it just for just for fun. No, but I mean, talking of performance, we've got a new performance measuring device, haven't we? That's coming out. You the are market. king of segways today. <laughs> I did it last week as well. Come on, doing it. For, so, before we jump to that, I mean, there are obviously the UCI have looked at some of the helmets. For example, the specialized helmet the, hmm. the Quick Step team are using. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, has the balaclava that fitting and the whole logic there. I believe was to airflow around the ears and around the hair, yeah. etc. It's my understanding that UCI has actually ruled on that. I'm yeah, pretty that's, wrong, but that's the fourth of April. That's not going to. Yeah, that's golf because it's deemed to be and no non-essential. It's an extra item. Yeah, it's not an integrated part of the helmet. You don't need a snood or balaclava under your helmet. Yeah, so. yeah. So that's gone. So I think there is scope for stuff like this to be banished, to be sent to the shadow realm. Yeah, because uh, yeah, I mean, but yeah, I think we'll wait and see, won't we? I, I don't think it, it can't be intrinsically dangerous. I think yeah, as you said, the visibility, like you've got so much visor around there. It's that's my suspicion. Having not worn, it's not as closed in as a. It doesn't look as closed in anyway as a conventional TT helmet. So. Yeah, but sorry, I spoke. No, I know. No. <laughs> Go on, power meter pedals. So we've been um, speculating about this on the channel. We keep saying that Look are about to drop some power meter pedals. They finally dropped them. We were expecting to get some um, to demo uh, to, to test out. I think that hasn't happened. And now I've seen the DC Rainmaker first look. I understand why we don't have <laughs> a set of pedals um, because he's managed to break them. And that's the whole point of people send things to DC Bay make a monster ahead. He's normally a bit of a, a, a tester. So I think we're going to expect to get ours fairly soon. And we'll give them a bit more of a, a look at sort of practicality terms and whether you can live with them sort of day to day and how you can take them apart and service them. That's going to be our take on the review that we do. Anyway, these new power meter pedals, they've entered that, they've been in this market for a little while, but they've looked like they've gone, do you know what? We really want a piece of this market. Let's do this properly. They've launched... Uh, two pedals, a road bike pedal and a, mountain, and a mountain bike pedal. Now, they've taken a few keys of other people. So they've got the removable axles. You can change out the pedal bodies. You can change from a road to a mountain bike. You can change things out. It's a chargeable one, so no batteries. Uh, well, as a Garmin, I know. Mean, first, you know, as a Garmin user for many, many years, I've had the various iterations over the years. The one thing that does frustrate me is changing the batteries, taking those little, uh, I'll have 44 batteries out. And Losing the battery covers. Lose, well, I've lost the battery covers on a couple of races where yeah. my, my bad riding probably pedal touches, cover comes off. And plus, I've had issues with kind of damp ingress and right palm meter missing it. So. I, had, I had the mountain bike ones. I had to get them back in the end because the battery covers just came off all the time. But to be fair to Garmin, I, I am, I've always appreciated their service. Anytime I've had a problem, Garmin have you know, fixed it. But I'm really impressed by the look of these first of all they're all carbon the keel blades i already had the non-power meter versions on my time trial bike yeah they absolutely perform beautifully and they're very aero and the fact they've got the weight down i think a pair is 260 grams yeah, that's incredible. which is phenomenal for for that and the other thing that really appears to me is the stack height um this minimal stack height so you shouldn't feel anything subtly different there's no micro adjustments required from your saddle and the other key thing is the stack height is very comparable i think it's 0.1 or point between, 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 between the mountain bike, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> between the extract, of, I can't see a situation where that's going to be useful because it's very off. But you know, it's nice to know, isn't it? No, it could be if say you've got something like a, an ADHX, and you say you might have that with a set of road wheels and a set of gravel wheels. Okay, yeah, yeah. You could be either if you're going on like a long road bike packing holiday, you might want your you might want a set of road pedals on there, or if you're then going on. A gravel race, you might then want your gravel pedals on that. So I think it, I think it is comparable. Sure, I think there is definitely, there's definitely a market for it. I think it could. I think it's nice that they've thought about that. Yeah, I think for me, one of the most interesting things is actually the mountain bike pedal is is unrated. So um, we've talked about this on the channel before about wheels being categorised. Everything in cycling should be categorised, whether it's a road category one, gravel is category two, cross country mountain bike grab category three, uh, trail riding category four, and then etc. Enduro riding category five. And they've all got associated with drops. So the bigger the drop you take, the bigger the impact the part takes, um, the stronger it is. So you can't really take a gravel wheel down a downhill course. It kind of makes sense to us, but it's nice to, that things get rated to a certain standard. Most, nearly, every, in fact, everything I know of on the market, mountain biking is only rated to cross country, 61 centimetre drop. Now, I don't know if you've watched a, a recent round of the cross country World Cup. They are hitting things bigger than 61 centimetres. So... Well done for look for actually making these robust enough to go right the way up to the top of the categories. There's yeah. no limit on the drops now. Um, I think that's going to give you an awful lot of reassurance if you are going to drop in thousand pounds on a set of mountain bike pedals. Yes. They are they are premium. Yeah, they they hopefully um, if DC Rainmaker doesn't keep breaking them, they look like they're going to be 
pretty pretty robust and strong, which um, has to be a good thing. Yes. I, I've tried the Garmin rallies and I broke them and I definitely wasn't doing drops much bigger than that. So, so yeah. And I, I mean, I think what my, my main thing about it as well is more competition because you see for power meter pedals, it's, I mean, really there's, there's not a lot kicking around, but now Favera have just released their new mountain bike pedals. So I think hopefully more competition, it'll make stuff better, more accurate. I mean, I mean, it's, I mean, they're real, they're also, it's not just, it's, it's not just the same product. These guys are innovating with the charging mechanism as well. Yeah. As we're saying, you're not, well, I'd say that's the biggest plus for me in terms of you can just plug it in and charge it off a usb it's a rechargeable battery it now 60 hours and like you say you know it's probably the similar battery life to if you're running your on your shram battery yeah shram etap life is also about 60 hours so if you if you're flicking out your shram batteries to get them on charge then yeah putting plugging in your uh, your pedals is about the same think, you know if you're traveling you just need to take the little magnetic cap that goes on the end for charging i mean it's a minimal thing to take with you if you're traveling if you're worried about you know if you're on a trip or something so mm. yeah I think um, they're really good. Can't wait to get my hands on a set and have to give them well, a test. I've got a tight drive by waiting to have a bear put on. Yeah, <laughs> like, jump, jump in a car, <laughs> jump in the pedals <laughs> on my bike. Yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd definitely want to set those mountain bike ones for the um, for the gravel bike. Um, that'd be really, really useful. I think so. Yeah, I think that's it for this week's podcast. And any other exciting news? I think comes our way. If um, we're not going to try and film these every Wednesday at about two o'clock, so if you guys have got anything you want us to talk about, get your get your comments down below and let us know. If you like this sort of content, please give us a thumbs up. Get involved in the discussion down in those comments. And yeah, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks very much. Peace.